everyone. Welcome to the Earth Tones Girl channel. My name is Denise and this is Earth Vlog number 68. <laughs> Can you guys believe it? Okay, is anyone else as excited as I am that this is two episodes in the same month? Today is the 28th. My last episode I think was the 5th. I think it was the 5th. Oh my gosh. I recorded on the 5th and put it out on the 6th. Anyway, I am here again. Maybe this is a sign of more episodes to come. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see what happens. But I'm here and I'm so, so happy to be here with all of you. How are you doing? Um, we're almost at the halfway point with summer. Um, yeah, lots of good things going on around here. The kids and I have had a very lazy summer so far. Um, I don't know, numbers are creeping back up again. We're just being kind of careful, maybe overly careful, but I'd rather be careful, rather be safe than sorry. Um, but anyway, let's talk socks. I feel like this summer has become the summer of socks. I, I, I know, I think every summer is the summer of socks, but this particular, this summer in particular, it's just been amazing. Um, what, I don't even know where to begin. So, okay. I'm going to go over, I told you guys guys in the last episode or toward the end that I would revisit, um, told you all, I don't like to say you guys, told you all that I would revisit the scrappy socks. The response to those was just amazing. I'm so glad you, so many of you liked them. Um, so I'm going to revisit that in just a second because I wanted to give you um, numbers and weights and things like that, just so you have an idea and you can plan for yourselves. Um, I have two pairs of socks. I'm glancing at my notes as usual. Two pairs of socks, um, and then just some other stuff. The Wooly Thistle sock bag. Um, I did an episode on their Shopcast, which was really, really fun. I think that was out a week ago now, two weeks ago. Um, so yeah, I'll put a link to that down below and I'll, I'll insert a little bit of footage um, for you. And uh, yes, they sent me the video. Yay, they were able to do that uh, this time. So I'm going to do an episode here on my channel, including all of that, that entire interview. So stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, you can watch it over on their channel. Uh, and I will link to, to that in the shop note, the show notes down below. And I also did um, the Sock Week expert panel with uh, Natalie Coons, who is Nitty Natty. That was really fun too. Uh, that was, oh my gosh, two weeks ago also. And um, that was really fun. I think it was a paid for event, so I'm not sure that you can watch um, the recap, but it was just really fun um, hanging out with her and Summer Lee, who is Summer, Lee Knits, um, Lisa, I'm forgetting her last name, but she is Paper Daisy Creations. And oh my goodness, oh my goodness, why am I blanking? Myself and then Natalie. So it was the four of us. Um, Julianne Knitter was supposed, who um, is Twin Stitch Designs. She's Julianne Knits on Instagram. She was supposed to do it, but had something come up at the last minute. So that was really fun. And it was basically us just chatting for an hour and a half about sock knitting and sharing little tips and tricks and you know just talking about socks and I feel like that's all I've been talking about lately uh, and I also want to share with you I have to make a note um, to myself at the end there is a woman named Sarah Opie who is S dot knits on Instagram and she is going to be doing a really really amazing um event on her Instagram channel for those of you that are there. I feel like I'm doing all the admin stuff in the beginning, so I'll just keep going. Um, she's doing a really, really fun thing on her channel, like I said, and um, it's called the Seven, Seven Days of Plain Socks. And basically starting on August 1st, which is a Monday, she's going to share um, a vanilla sock pattern with you each day, talking about um, sorry, I just got a notification talking about her, how she knits her vanilla socks. And each day when she covers a new vanilla sock, there is a different cuff or a different heel or a different toe. Many of her socks are also toe up, which I also thought I should not should, but really wanted to share here since I tend to be very top down. Um, 
so yeah i really wanted to share that so i will link to her information down below also i saw that on her channel this morning and was just like what oh my gosh i'm so excited and a lot of the heels you can do um toe up or cuff down so and the cuffs and bind offs and things like that as well so that is definitely if you're on instagram i know that will definitely be worth checking out she's also going to be including um she's also going to have a pattern a sock pattern collection uh which is going to be available each day so if you go to her ravelry page she also has pay hip if ravelry does not work for you and i'll link to everything down below she is going to be releasing one new sock pattern a day for seven days. So you, if you buy the bundle on Monday, you'll just get a new pattern added every day, or you can wait and get them all at the end. So um, again, I was so, so, so excited. I sent her a message like, what, this is amazing. And because there's so many ways, which is what I talk about here all the time. There's so many ways to knit socks and to knit you know, adding little variations and tweaking things, you can have the same vanilla, basic vanilla sock pattern and tweak it, tweak it, tweak it forever. <laughs> I mean, really, this it sky's the limit with what you can do with your heels, with your cuffs. Um, yeah, and I'm going to talk about that um, some more in a little bit because, yeah, oh my gosh, so much. Okay, let's, I've, I've digressed for six minutes. <laughs> So um, let me just take a nice calming deep breath and then we will jump right in. <laughs> okay, if you've been watching me for a while and you are a frequent viewer here on the channel, welcome back. And you should know by now how ridiculously excited I get about socks. So <laughs> to the point of breathlessness. So <laughs> I apologize for my running on and running on. Uh, and if you're new here to the channel, welcome. You are so welcome here. There are quite a few new subscribers. So thank you so much for subscribing and for finding your way here. A lot of people were introduced to me um, through the Wooly Thistle podcast. So that was really wonderful. And I'm so, so happy to um, have you here and in my little community in my space. Uh, so let's talk about the scrappy socks. Let's revisit that, shall we? I'm not going to bother to put them on the um, on the blockers, but what I did do, and I'm going to pick up my notes so I don't have to constantly glance off to the side. So I've got my little handy dandy notebook. And so what I did, I started with 25. It was an advent calendar that I was using. So there were 25 10 gram minis. There are approximately 40 yards in each 10 gram ball. So all together in weight, that's 250 grams, which is approximately 464 yards. Wow, that is a ton of yarn. Now, what you usually get in a full skein, which I have up here, what you usually get in a full skein, they're usually 100 grams, and you get, depending on the weight of the, or size of the yarn, because usually DK then would be heavier, so you get less yardage. But on average, for a fingering weight, you're getting anywhere from 400 to 400 and, I don't know, maybe 20. So you definitely have more yarn with this, but you're, you're almost getting double the weight if that makes sense. So for the full size, let me see where I have those here. I'll just hold one up. Hold on, hold up both. Um, just not, like I said, putting them on the locker. So for the full size socks, I got the weight on these was 72 grams. Okay, so based on, you can kind of figure out, I'll run all the numbers and put them all in the description box for you, but you can get an approximation on the yardage then. Um, but the full size skein was 72 grams. The shorty socks, let's open those up. So here are the shorty socks and these weighed 51 grams. Now the garter stitch heel is definitely going to eat a little bit more yarn. Um, just That's just the nature of garter stitch. Uh, but again, that gives you just an approximation. So this is 51 grams. And I think in right up here, I have some 50 gram sets. As a matter of fact, let me grab one. And 
Okay, so yeah, this is a 50 gram set, which is an a which is and it's the same percentage of wool to nylon, 75 merino, 25% nylon, and this is 231 yards in 50 grams, 231 in 50 grams. So this was 51. Um, so I think that little extra weight is coming from the garter stitch heel on this. Um, and I know I'm going to get a question. What is that? Because it's so pretty because it really is pretty. This is Sweet Shop by Legacy Fiber Arts. And this is a 50 gram sock set. It's so pretty. So there it is. Um, so yes, that answers that. I also started a pair of no Everything November mitts, which is a pattern by Jen Yard. She is Everything Shapes Us on Instagram. And I started a fingerless mitt. There is my little bee charm. <laughs> I love that so much. It's so cute. So if I slide this on, and this is weighing, now this is missing the top. Hang on. I didn't get very far. Sorry. I didn't, my ends are woven in, but they're not trimmed. So my fingers are getting caught on them. So here we go. So this is where I am right now with this fingerless mitt. And this right now weighs 17 grams. So I have to, I usually knit my fingerless mitts up to about this first joint on my pinky. I, I like them a little high. So I have a little more to add plus the thumb and that's gonna come just about by the thumb joint there. So I'm thinking by the time you add on, by the time you finish knitting this, it'll be approximately anywhere from 20 to maybe 21, 22 grams. Um, for one. So the pair should be anywhere from 40 to 45, give or take roughly, um, in terms of weight. So, and I still have, this is all made from that advent calendar, and I still have so much yarn left. It is just amazing. I could probably get roughly two, maybe two more pairs of shorty socks, possibly even another, or like maybe another pair of fingerless mitts. There's, there's a lot of yarn there. So that covers that. Uh, if you have any other questions about that, just drop them in the comments down below. And again, I'll put all these numbers for you in the show notes. And I finished my little experiment, my sunrise sunset socks. And here they are. They are all done. Oh my goodness. And again, I talked about these last time and, you know, I talked about the differences and this one is toe up. This one is top down and I got them to almost perfectly match. It has been really too warm for me to try them on. <laughs> uh, there's been a bit of a heat wave in the Northeast right now. Um, the, yesterday and today is the first day where I don't think we hit 90. We might hit it today, but it was actually almost cool morning before last. So I, it's finally cooling off, but still a little too warm to wear them. So um, the actual wear test won't probably happen until the fall, but when I just put them on, they fit really great and I cannot feel a major difference when I just slide them on my feet. So here they are complete, all done. I love them. Again, this colorway is Sunrise Sunset by Legacy Fiber Arts. This was a 50 gram, um, sock set similar so it's a, it's exactly this this amount gave me this and i had a little bit left over so um yeah i just wanted to show you that i did finish these oh okay sorry just squirrel <laughs> i love them so much and so let me pop these off the needles and show or off the blockers and show you another pair that I just finished. I've been knitting a lot these days. It never feels like a lot until I start talking about them. <laughs> so uh, let's get these on and I'll show you. I hope you all have been knitting a lot, whether it's socks or sweaters, whatever you're doing. And even if you're not knitting, if you're crocheting, if you're spinning, if you're sewing, I hope you are doing something that makes you happy. <laughs> So here is this set. Oh my gosh, look at these. Oh, I love them so much. Let's pull back so you can see them. 
Let's go up a little closer so you can see all these glorious colors. Oh my goodness, I love them so much. Yay, and this is, the name of this colorway is Zen, Z-E-N, by Freckled Whimsy. Love, love, love them. Um, this was a self-striping, it's an eight stripe repeat. Uh, yeah, eight stripes on this. And I did, it came with a contrasting mini that matched this light gray stripe. And I just divided, so here, let me just show you. So what I did with this, I divided the stripe, the gray stripe, and put the heel into the gray stripe. And now that I'm looking at it actually on camera, I realize that there's a little spiral going on. That's just the way the yarn um, knit up. I don't have the ball here in front of me, but that's just the way the yarn knit up. It was a tonal mini and that's what it did. So yeah, there you go. And what I did here, how did I divide this? So if I'm dividing a stripe to include a contrasting heel, if it's an odd number, I put the smaller number at the top. So if it's an odd number, this one, let's say was five. I think this was five. Hold on, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, this was five. So I knit two stripes, then put the heel in, and then knit the remaining three. Because I figured it would look a little bit more balanced if the thinner portion of the stripe was just kind of above the heel or in line with the top of the heel. And then you had more depth on the stripe underneath the heel. So that's what I did here and here. So again, if it's an odd, if it's an odd number, I'll put the smaller, so a five, three, if it's five or four, three, four, if it's seven, I'll put the smaller stripes at the top, then do the heel and then continue on with the contrasting color. If it's an even number, then, you know, three and three, two and two, whatever it is, that's, that's a lot easier, but that is how I do, um, my striping when I'm including a contrasting heel that matches. And I will do that also, even if it doesn't match, even if I'm just, I'll still try to line it up. If the contrasting color does not match the stripe, I will still try to line it up either between stripes or within a stripe with that same dividing of the, of the rounds. Um, yeah, and what I did here on the toe, just for fun, I, I don't know what, what made me do it, just I did it because I can. I just decided instead of a knit one, SSK, continue across, and then a knit two together one, I put two stitches between the decreases. So at the beginning of the round, it's knit one, knit one, then do the decrease, knit across, do the decrease, and then knit, knit. So I just put more stitches in here, in this space between the decreases, just to make the toe a little bit wider. Doesn't change the feel or depth in any way. Um, I don't know, just thought aesthetically, just to try something new, why not? Um, but here they are. So again, Zen by Freckled Whimsy. So, 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 so pretty, love them. So there you go. Um, I think, yeah, I think that was the only thing. And the pattern is my sock exploration pattern. Um, 64 stitches. I did a shadow wrap short row heel. Yep. And there you go. Perfect. Everything lines up. I love, love, love when the stripes line up. Just love it so much. <laughs> uh, so yes, that is the pattern. That is the yarn. I don't know if she has this available in her shop right now. You can go and have a look. And I do know that she has, this is Carrie is the name of the dyer. Hi, Carrie, if you're watching. Uh, I do know that she has a 24 stripe advent calendar uh, that she just put on sale for pre-order um, in her shop. So if you're interested in that, I always get the Advent Stripe calendar by the Advent Stripe skein, I'm saying it wrong, the 24 Stripe Advent skein by the Cozy Knitter. She also has hers out right now for pre-order if you wanna go and take a look there. I'll, again, everything will be down in the show notes. And um, 
yeah i had i got both last year and absolutely loved them you you almost can't compare them the only thing they really have in common is that they're both 24 stripes but the yarn bases are different the colors are so different um i love them both it's just i it, i just wanted both so i got both <laughs> um so yes they are both available now so if you're looking for an advent and the advent skeins are usually a lot less money than a full advent calendar. The advent calendars, um, you get 24, 20 gram minis. So that automatically is going to make it more expensive. So if you would still like to participate in the advent holiday knitting along themed yarn, I find the advent skein is a little bit more um, economically friendly. So just to give you another option. Uh, so yeah. That is that. So let's talk about the woolly thistle. Um, you know what? I am recording summer, recording at home in the summer. <laughs> Just have to pause for one moment. The kids are here. I'll be right back. The kids are fine. <laughs> no disasters. Everything is okay. I'm back. Um, you know what? I also just realized I am not, I realized I did not put my mic in to my camera. Okay, pause again. You know what? I'm just going to keep going because at least there'll be continuity with the volume. <laughs> I apologize. I don't know why. I, I, I always, I have a little external mic that I use um, and I forgot to put it in this time. So I will sort of raise my voice a little bit and I'll try to fix this in editing. So um, yeah, it's okay. It's not absolutely going to be a perfect episode, but that's all right. <laughs> um, so here, the Wooly Thistle does a sock sprint. I think they've done it now. This is maybe their fourth year. And they've also done the Wooly Thistle sock bag. And I really wanted to talk about that in this episode because the yarn that's included in the bag is so beautiful. So, so amazing. A lot of it is from, um, from England, Wales, Ireland. So Scotland, just from overseas. And it's, uh, some of it is kind of hard to find here. And I'm so grateful to Kareen and her team for making this yarn available. Actually, the skein that I'm holding here is from Portugal. So it's really, it's from all over. But it, again, it's wool that you can't very, you can't get that easily here in the US. So here is this year's bag. Here it is. And it's this adorable little tote bag. Um, I just love that print on the bag. It's so cute. Last year's, I have last year's bag here. Last year she did more of a project bag size and this year she did the tote. So I've gotten the last two years. So I've actually had my project in here as I've been knitting and carrying it around. Um, but everything came in this bag. So I decided to make a pair of socks. So let's talk about the sprint. She does the sock bags and usually coincides it with the sock sprint. And it is a just a sock knitting challenge. Started on the 15th. It actually ends today. And um, you knit a pair of socks in two weeks. So one sock a week or however you want to do it. You can knit more than that. You can knit less. It's 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 a personal challenge. There's no it's no competition or anything like that. Um, no pressure to even finish it. And I didn't finish, but I'll tell you why in a minute. So I chose the yarn that I chose from this year's bag. So from last year's bag, my One More Step socks, that beautiful green yarn came from last year's bag. This year, I seem to be designing and that became my latest pattern. And I'm, I'm sort of mentally designing again. And um, this is definitely going to happen, but I'll, I'll get, okay, I'll get there. <laughs> I keep interrupting myself. So in this bag this year was, I'll leave the best, what I think so far is the best. I haven't knit with all of them yet, but this came in the sock bag and this is the Portuguese yarn, Mondim, M-O-N-D-I-M. Forgive me if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, uh, but this is a Portuguese yarn and it is, let me see, I'm not wearing my glasses, but I think I can read it. It is 100% Portuguese wool so it's not uh it didn't list a specific breed of sheep but it is 100 percent portuguese and it's a beautiful i have actually knit with this yarn i have it in yellow 
and I had done a little experiment in the yellow colorway. It's like a tonal color, which I'm going to revisit very, very soon. And um, so yeah, this colorway came in the in the kit. It is beautiful. Uh, this was also in the kit. And this is Jagger Spun Spinners of Natural Fiber since 1898. And this is actually from Maine. So now I'm, I'm sort of blowing what I said out of the water. I think last year's bag was all from overseas. So this is a beautiful hodgepodge, not a hodgepodge, but a mix. That's a better word, a mix of yarn this year. And this is also, it is a 100% superwash wool. So there's no nylon in this and there was no nylon in, um, in this one either. So these, one common thread is that all of these yarns tend to be much more on the natural side. Um, meaning little to no nylon, um, not so heavily processed or milled. And it really is amazing yarn. This is a new to me yarn. Um, I just think this colorway is beautiful. Is there a name for this colorway? Yes, it's called Lemon. Uh, and this is 100 grams, 435 yards. So there we go. That is just gorgeous. And I, she also included this year, this looks to me like it's slightly heavier. This is like a DK kind of worsted weight. Let me see if I can hold them all together. Make it look decent here. There we go. And she included this also. So beautiful. This is 100%, I think this is Norwegian. I could be wrong. It's Norsk, N-O-R-S-K, Ull, Norsk, Ull, U-L-L. -L. Um, yeah, and this is uh, 50 grams and 120 meters. Usually with meters, you add about another 20 or 30 for yardage. So that will give you an idea. And it's so lovely, so lovely. Again, no nylon but I love these colors together. This would make a really pretty simple color work pattern. You could maybe work a color work pattern into the top of it. Uh, but here is the other yarn. It feels amazing. It smells amazing. Does anyone else sniff yarn besides? I think we all do. We just don't always talk about it, right? <laughs> uh, and inside was this little gift. This is from jo John James. Uh, and these are just a set of needles. I'm sorry about the glare. There we go. You can see it a little better. Just a set of darning needles that was included. And she had stickers here, which are so, so cute stickers. And also, which I think is my favorite part, I am included, but that's not why it's my favorite part. I love that she included pattern suggestions because sometimes one of the biggest questions I get from knitters is what pattern do I knit? Where do I begin? That is that is a common thread. So I wanna knit socks, where do I start? So Corrine has created this beautiful sock bag and she's given you ideas, pattern suggestions here on where to begin, what to knit, and it's just, it's so, so helpful. So here you go. Um, yeah, and it's great. And thank you very much for including my latest pattern on that. I'm very, very grateful to you. Thank you, Kareen. So now, saving what I've test knit so far for last, another thing that was included in the bag was two skeins of this. And this is called Drover. D-R-O-V-E-R, -E by Daughter of a Shepherd. I absolutely love that sweet little logo. This yarn, I don't really know how to describe this. It is so natural. It is, hold on, 90% British wool, 10% nylon, very, very little nylon. This is Zwarbles, Exmoor, um, Blue, Fla Blue Face Lester, and Hebridean. Those are the sheep. That's the, all the sheep that blended in for this yarn. Um, and it is incredible. It is 
rich and soft. It has, you can almost, you can feel, not almost, you can absolutely feel the lanolin in this yarn. I mean, my hands just, I can feel it. I, you touch the yarn and you can feel the lanolin on your hands, which is just, some people don't like that. That's a little too natural for some. I can't get enough of it. And I love, 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 love this smell. When you go to Rhinebeck um, or to a fiber festival that has yarn, that has animals, sheep and alpacas and things um, on the fairgrounds, this is what you smell. It's, it is just, you don't get that unpleasant barn smell that you can sometimes get from animals. This just smells fresh and clean and woolly. It just smells like wool. If you looked up, what does wool smell like? It smells like this. And I fell madly in love with it. I had someone ask me if it's, that looks kind of scratchy. It's not as soft as a merino. I mean, yarn like this is amazing and I love it, but it is chemically processed. This doesn't have any of that in it. So there you go. Now, this is what I knit with it. There it is. Oh my gosh. I love this so much. I just played around with the pattern. I literally made this up as I went along. I love it so much. Again, the goal of this challenge was to knit a full pair in the two weeks. I did not, and I don't really care because I had so much fun. <laughs> it really doesn't matter because I ripped this out and I knit it almost a full two times to get it exactly the way I wanted. Um, and I'm still playing with it and experimenting. So I did a, I cast on 64 stitches in a two by two rib. And I just learned a new, I'll save that for another episode. Oh my God, there's so many thoughts in my head. But I just learned a new way to tighten ribbing that is absolutely brilliant, like brilliantly brilliant. I'll talk about that more in an upcoming episode. Um, but it's a really incredible and, and simply ingenious way of wrapping your yarn that tightens the space between the knits and the purls. It is amazing. So, I, and I was only about two or three rows rounds into this when I saw that tutorial on Instagram. So I decided to just, I've got to try it. So um, I started to do that and I did notice a difference in the ribbing, like immediately. It really is incredible. I think that tutorial might actually have cured me of my dislike for a one by one rib. Cause I always find a one by one rib, you're, no matter how much I try, I don't like how wide the knit stitches look. It, it just doesn't look clean and neat to me the way a two by two does. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna give that a try. So we'll see, but stay tuned. Anyway, so this is 64 stitches. I did a two by two and then started knitting a six by two ribbing on the leg. And I love how it just naturally blended and came right out of the ribbing on the cuff. I love when there's symmetry in patterns like that. I just absolutely love it. So here is one side, here is the other side. And again, I was sort of playing as I went along. So the two sides aren't exactly even, but I didn't really care. And I knit a garter stitch heel with a, a garter stitch heel flap with a square heel. Now, here is what it looks like here. And I've been playing this is the heel I want in my new pattern or in my next pattern. And I've been playing with the percentages because a garter stitch by nature stretches a little bit more. It has more give. And I didn't want that give to make the sock slide down or stretch out the heel flap. So I've been playing with percentages to get it, to get the numbers exactly right. So here's what it looked like on my shorty sock. But as you can see, this, it looks a little bit more square than this one. So this heel flap is significantly longer than this one. However, I love the way this feels. So it looks short. It almost has a quick, at a quick glance, it almost looks like a short row heel, but it is a, there is a heel flap and then a square heel. So I'm gonna take it off the needle, off the blocker. I keep saying needles, but off the blocker so you can see it. 
So yeah, here you go. So you have your heel flap. And again, you see how much give it has? So it looks a little bit shorter, but when you put this on your foot, it fits perfectly, absolutely perfect. I love the way it fits and feels on my foot. And then I did a square heel. So you have a center with a square heel or also known as a Dutch heel. You have your center stitches and you're just dividing on either side of those. So that, and when you're finished, you have that square little channel there um, or shaping, that square shaping in the dead center in the middle of the sock. And I just think it's so neat. So you really, really get a perfect L shape. So you get, I do it with my hands, but you get an L, there we go. <laughs> I was like, I can't get my hands to work. You get an L shape perfectly and your heel sits right here in the L. It's so neat and comfortable. And again, it also, because of the nature of the garter stitch, it gives you a little bit more reinforcement um, at that stress point, which is the where your heel meets your shoe, right? At that back portion there. So yeah, let's pop this back on for a second. Um, yeah, so here we go. And here it is again, just a little side by side on those two heels. Now, when I take this one off, you can see, you can really see how, you see how much more give that is. After you've put your shoe on and off and on and off or taken your sock or your foot out of your shoe multiple times and you've worn these, worn these multiple times, that's going to start to almost stay stretched a little bit, so I wanted to eliminate that from the beginning. So you still have give, but it doesn't give that much, okay? So, um, yeah, whoops, I just dropped a blocker, but that's okay. So again, this is Drover by Daughter of a Shepherd. I mean, just look at that. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Because I can hear it. I can hear the sheep like bang in the background. <laughs> I just, I love it so, so, so much. So this will be the heel featured in my next pattern. Um, I'm so excited and inspired. There's so much. I know Instagram has changed. I keep talking about this. It's changed for so many people and many can't stand the platform anymore. Um, but I still find inspiration there and I'm I'm not going to leave it anytime soon. I still find a lot of inspiration. You have to dig a lot harder to find it and look a lot harder and broaden your spectrum, broaden your horizons with who you follow and things like that and following the hashtags and things. So you're, you're not getting so bombarded by the video. So I still am so inspired there. Uh, so yeah, here is my sock. So I have cast on the second one. I did all of this yesterday. So this was all done yesterday, but then I had a little family thing I had to attend to in the evening. So I wasn't able to knit anymore, but these, I can't wait to get these finished. So this is already started. <sighs> I think that's it. Just checking my notes. So I'm writing down. So in my little notebook here, what I do, I keep all of my podcast episodes, vlogs, um, tutorials, everything in these, these are moleskin notebooks that I buy on um, on Amazon. And um, I keep all of my notes in here. So my notes right now for this sock, I will jot them down on whatever piece of paper on post-its and just tuck them into the book. I will tape them in. If it's on a post-it, I'll stick it in. But this then I've got, this is the third one that I have with um, notes. And every time I fill one, I just keep going and I write in pencil in case I need to change anything. So this is how I keep track of my notes. And also if anyone has a question from an episode way, way back, I may not remember what I said in the episode or have time to rewatch the whole thing, but I know I can find it in my notes. So just something I do from one podcaster to any podcasters out there watching. Um, so yeah, in terms of socks, that's basic, that covers everything. I mean. I've got other things I'm working on on the other side of the camera, but these are the things I just finished that I'm super excited about. Um, the kids and I are going to be going on a little um, little mini trip. Um, my husband's going to be here 
and yeah, we're just doing we're just doing a quick trip. So I'm hoping to get a lot of knitting done on that trip too. So we'll see. I am. Um, <clears throat> What else is happening? So yeah, we talked about the Woolly Thistle. Um, I will include the link to the shop, their shopcast. I will try to get that full interview here on my channel. I just have to figure out, I I'm savvy with certain things regarding technology and very unsavvy with other things. So once I figure out how to download the, the, the video, um, I will get that up here for you on the channel. And... We talked about sock week that's now finished we're in the middle of shark week right now to any of you watching um our family are die hard watchers of shark week and um, for those of you not in the u.s shark week is on the discovery channel which is more like a documentary nature type channel here in the u.s once a year usually in july they cover the entire week is just sharks um incidents documentaries, information, shark breeds, everything that relates to sharks is covered during this week. And we we watch every evening. We have dinner and then we all gather around the TV and that's what we watch. And my daughter and husband in particular are riveted. It's it's their passion. They love it. So um yeah, I've just I've been knitting quite a bit. <laughs> so um yeah, I'm hoping to get some more sock projects done. Um I have something really exciting really 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 exciting coming to the shop and I will be talking about that in um the next episode um so stay tuned <laughs> can't wait can't wait to tell you and um I think that's everything I have um uh, as always Thank you all so much for being here. Um, if there is any, if you have questions about anything, if I forgot to, if I said something and then didn't go back to it, just remind me down below because I have a lot of squirrel senior moments. So, <laughs> uh, and I forget things very easily. So, um, yeah, just remind me, leave comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, for being here, for following. And um, I will see you all again really soon. What do you think? Maybe we can get three episodes in for next month. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'll just see where the road takes me. But I'm so happy to have been here with you all today. And um, I'll see you all again soon. Bye, everybody. Thank you.